Unfortunately, for the last 1400 years, many Muslims have fallen victim to the lies and deception, the mekr and the taqiyya of Muslim shiuch, imams, ustaz, the scholars of Islam who have been lying to their audience, let's say inside mosques. Muslim shiuch, Muslim scholars have made a business out of lies and deception. And we know that more than 75% of the Islamic Ummah don't know Arabic. They have no idea. So today we will uncover the secrets and we are going to show you that the Imams are nothing but liars. They are nothing but liars like their fake prophet who proclaimed prophethood 1400 years ago. So if you are a sincere Muslim, and you are a truly seeker of truth, then continue listening. If you are a Muslim who doesn't care about the truth, please don't forget to give me a dislike. If you are a Christian or an atheist, give me a like. <laughs> so let us actually start. Now we know that Sahih al-Bukhari contains many strange hadith that Muslims regard as authentic and it is really strange that someone like Imam al-Bukhari which his book comes immediately after the Quran as the second most important book in Islam especially in Sunni Islam it is strange that we find many Sahih Hadiths in Bukhari. Hadiths like that you maybe heard about stoning of a adultery committing monkey, the talking donkey Afur, and many strange things about animals. But I found a really shocking hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and I hope that you didn't hear about it especially if you're a Muslim and this should actually make you start to think about your salvation about Islam if you are a sincere human being now let us read the hadith and I hope you will not get shocked I truly hope that you are not going to get shocked but you actually should be if you are a Sunni Muslim and I hope that your brains will start to function and make you think uh, twice if you want to stay a Muslim in 2020. Now let us read the hadith. Now try not to get shocked after reading this Sahih Bukhari hadith. This is Sahih al-Bukhari hadith number 5105 again Sahih al-Bukhari hadith number 5105 Yurwa an Yahya al-Kindi an al-Sha'bi wa Abi Ja'far fi man yal'abu bis-sabi in adkhalahu fihi fala yatazawwajna ummah ay la yahqu wa la yahillu liman yumaris al-jins ma hadha al-sabi and yet the sabi. In English says the following and narrated Abu Jafar if a man plays with a boy, plays with a boy, and he enters him, i.e. with his penis, sorry for these 18 plus words, it is Islam, what can we do? Then the mother of that boy is unlawful for him to marry. Again, if a man plays with a boy and he enters him between brackets with his penis then the mother of that boy is unlawful for him to marry this is Sahih al-Bukhari guys this is Sahih al-Bukhari what? so basically 
And according to Sahih al-Bukhari report, according to this Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, as a Muslim, you can have sex with a boy. But make sure that you are not allowed to have sex with his mother. Because that mother becomes unlawful for you. But it's okay to have a sex, to have sex with that boy, brother. It's okay to have sex with that boy. So do you see, Muslims, do you see that you are allowed to have sex with boys as men? I mean, if the Sahaba did it, why can't you do it? It doesn't say it's not halal to have sex with a boy. You can have sex with a boy, but make sure that you cannot marry his mother anymore. If you already entered him with your penis. Muslims, really? Muslims, really? You're kidding, right? You're kidding, right? This is Sahih al-Bukhari, guys. Please, Muslims, wake up. Please wake up. This is pedophilia and homosexual activity with a young boy. As clear as you can get it from such a authentic Bukhari hadith. Yes, you heard it correctly. This is homosexuality. This is pedophilia done by the Sahaba of Muhammad, the companions of Muhammad. Brother, it's okay to have sex with a small boy. You can enter him with your penis. But make sure that it's not lawful for you anymore to have sex with his mother. Yes, brother, yes. Rob Christian, you are a liar. No, I'm not lying. It's in front of you. Muslims, really? This is 2020. You cannot hide these disasters in your books anymore. You see, this is crystal clear proof that the Islamic Ummah is a nation that cannot read and understand their books. They don't read. They don't understand. And by the way, if the reading says so, that's me, it is so. I want to share a piece of a clip with you, which is uh, from this individual called Farid. I, I went to his video in which he's trying to refute my moon splitting. And look what I found. Look, look what his argument is. You would expect that the Persians and the Romans, in this time the Byzantines, would document such a miracle. Because both of them, especially the Romans, kept records strictly of pretty much everything. There's another issue with the advanced assumption here. One of the reasons why we do not have heaps of documented evidence was because most people were asleep at night. Remember, this is the seventh century. The argument here is uh, people, we don't have any secondary reports of the moon splitting in two in the seventh century because it happened at night, because, because people were sleeping, you know, people were mm -hmm. sleeping. They, they didn't see that because, you know, people were asleep. Because most people were asleep at night. Am I the only one who thinks this is this is the most one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever heard? He's got a point. Most <laughs> most people would be asleep. I mean, come on, you can't deny that. People sleep at night. Come on. <laughs> you are so silly. Alhamdulillah for Islam, brother. Please recite the Shahada, brother, and you will get seventy-two male virgins with big breast, brother. Alhamdulillah, subhanallah, brother, Muhammad told the truth in his Quran, brother. Are you going to accept my da'wah to Islam? I'm sure you're going to do that. You will recite the Shahada, brother, today.